Yeah, well, I'm Chunky, I'm the manager here at King's Quarry. The original plan was just to get the pebbles out, yeah. to wash, to get the aggregate, and then, yeah, just happened that we got sand, and then it also just happened that there happened to be a big sand shortage yeah. in the area. Well, Turned the well, byproduct yeah. into, yeah, a main product. So we we're making uh, sand, which goes up to a 4.5 mil, PAP7, which is your 4.5 to 7, and then a 7 to 13, and uh, 13 to 20 mil. It's a river pebble that the geologists have dated back to the Kuiper and been pushed down from the Kuiper Harbour and it's all pushed in a conglomerate and then stuck in the hill. Because the quarry had been mothballed in 1998 um, and so we've been going for a year here now so we're just bringing all our benches back into regulation I suppose. So we've just done a blast this week and that was 70,000 tonne and that should last us for the next six weeks or so. So it, the wash plant breaks the conglomerate down and separates the sand that binds it together. The silt content sits at around 13 to 15% in the conglomerate and the rest is sand. And even just breaking the conglomerate down was quite a hard process because it sits at around 68% lime. The log wash is, is what breaks the conglomerate apart. So the bulk feed we're feeding into it is sitting around just over 100 tonne an hour and about 35 to 40% of that is sand depending on where we're getting the material from. So the material is fed in, so it washes the bulk of the sand off so that doesn't have to go through the log wash and then the rest is, goes through the log wash where it'll break the pebble apart, break the conglomerate apart and then comes out of there and gets screened off and any sand that comes from that breaking apart is sent back around up to the cyclones with the sand that was pre-washed at the start. The silt comes out the top and the sand drops out the bottom and then the aggregate that comes out of the log wash is screened at the end and split into its individual poles. Uh, at the moment we have, have a team of six of us, yeah, all learning our spot, hopefully we'll grow in the year to come. Oh, Alex has sort of talked to me about the project in the last couple of years, uh, so I started coming down and being involved about a year ago, and eight months ago I moved down full time to help him get it up and running, and yeah, it was a bit of a project when I couldn't really see it first when nine containers turned up and he didn't think that was going to come out of it. Yeah so roughly yeah roughly three weeks the crane on site assembling and then a few more weeks of fine tuning and playing around and getting things balanced. That was a bit of a problem but we got there and then in the start we weren't going to concrete everything and as we done one thing we sort of it led to another thing and we realised if we're going to go in then we may as well go all in and do it properly and we will be the closest sand supplier to Auckland. Even a lot of the aggregate at the moment is coming from outer regions and being shipped in. With us just supplying some of the aggregate we'll take a lot of trucks off the road. So now we've started working with a lot of bigger companies and yep everyone seems to be happy especially with the pebble which is at the moment is coming from a long way away from Manawatu and this um, just geographically we can we're handy. We're hoping to be open to the public in two weeks time. Now the customers will, can come and collect or it can work either way. So our future plans are to put a filter press in which will allow us to clean all our water and keep it on a closed circuit. There'll be no water needed and it'll also allow us to clean all the groundwater from the quarry to make it a lot more environmentally friendly. And because of the silt content being high in lime, we're also planning on making some sort of byproduct out of that. Being able to sell the silt is, is sort of the long game, um, which will give us sort of around a 98, 99% utilization of what we're extracting. So the plant is powered by generator. Um, it's fairly 
low maintenance. There's not a lot to do with our checklist that we go over. And so in the mornings we'll start the generator up and start the pump up and start washing. Probably just the belts is probably the only only thing I've found that you need to keep an eye on. Just make sure they're running straight and especially on the radial belt. Other than that, the maintenance is very low. So when we first started running the plant, um, just the plant was custom to the material that we had here. So there was a bit of playing around, trying to get everything balanced, getting the water balanced. We had to change pumps and pulleys and yeah, knowing that we can ring you guys up and talk to someone in New Zealand and have someone here the next day. In the end we got there. Larry helped us through it all. We did look at a few different plants at the start and in the end it came down to going with Equip 2 because they were New Zealand based and if something went wrong we could ring someone up and Larry would be here in his plane. <laughs> and he puts lollies in my package every time he, he sends up some bolts and <laughs> sends a new motor up, I, I get lollies in the package. <laughs>